I want to talk about cycles of betrayal today. Now, like any other trauma cycle that you might have, you might have cycles of rejection, uh, very calm, very similar to betrayal. You might have cycles of being victimized in, in all kinds of ways. But basically every cycle, and today we're talking about betrayal, is something that you are manifesting based on an unhealed wound, probably from early childhood. And the thing is, a lot of times the basis for these cycles is inauthentic. Now, that's not some huge judgment against you because I could say, for example, when my father left when I was four or five years old, if I would always believe my father was coming back, which I did not, but many do, um, well, that is an inauthentic thing. It's setting up a kind of dream scenario fantasy um, that then doesn't happen. It never comes true. And then we keep manifesting these things that never come true. So when it comes to betrayal, for example, do you have a cycle where all your partners have cheated on you and they seemingly found somebody better and then ditched you feeling rejected and worthless? That would be a bummer, <laughs> right? Do you have cycles where people acted like they were your best friend and then they stabbed you in the back and it happened over and over and over and every time you think this one's going to be the best friend that I always dreamed of and once again they're not. So what happened was the first event that happened, the event that, that set this pattern in motion never got healed. But as a child, you came up with a kind of solution. And you probably didn't come up with it super intellectually, right? It was just something that kind of happened in whatever way. And it was subconscious. It was unconscious, whatever. But for example, for me, my dad left when I was little. And so I didn't have that male father figure. And so I, I started making, I started always having a special best friend. And my whole life I had this pattern of having that special best friend. And on some level, it would fall apart because of the, the pressure put on it by the inauthentic nature. It's like telling this person, you're going to solve this whole daddy issue that I've never completely solved. I just picked you to stand in for him somehow as if you could, right? You know, like you're six and I'm six and you're supposed to stand in for my dad. Like, no, uh, <laughs> but it would be like, we're going to stick together, you and me against the world. And, you know, nice, beautiful, sentimental thought, but based on an inauthentic thing, which is dad's gone. You need to process it. Not that you can know it four five, six years old. It's not a blame thing, but what happens then, for example, with me, it's like, oh, well, dad betrayed me. Well, there's the first betrayal. Your daddy's supposed to live with you forever. 
and love you and care and protect you and whatever, right? And then he's like, nah, I'm out. And not with a lot of emotion either. So it's like, okay, so then I'll find this closeness with somebody else. And of course, as soon as you set that up, you're actually setting up the cycle of betrayal. Now, sometimes you're actually getting people that be, excuse me, that betray you. Sometimes you manifest serial betrayers. But sometimes what you manifest is somebody that ends up getting roped into your little delusional fantasy and they don't even know what the deal is. They just think, oh, we're, we're hanging out, whatever, you know, right? If your romantic partner, for example, if all your other romantic partners have cheated on you and then you go out like, I'm going to find that person who is so in love with me or maybe who doesn't have other options. I'm going to figure out a scenario where I find that person who will never cheat on me. And guess what? They're going to probably cheat on you too. They're going to hit you in that blind spot that you could not ever imagine. Like your nerdy boyfriend, the only thing he does besides hanging out with you is he goes to this chess club and plays chess, you know? Then he's going to meet some nerdy chick there and <laughs> he's going to cheat on you. And you're going to think, oh man, I'm safe sending him to the chess club. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's where he's going to hook up with somebody, right? You're going to think, how the hell did this happen? I, I had it all locked down and, and, and yet I'm betrayed again. So, so how do we get out of the cycle of betrayal? First of all, like with all manifestations, as I have said in other videos, and I think one video kind of has this pretty much as the title, you're either a victim or a manifester. And I can't help you be a victim. You're doing fine with that by yourself. But I can help you untie the knots of your manifestation and straighten things out. So the first thing that you do is say, I manifested this pattern. This is my manifestation. I am not the victim of these people. I am the manifester of these people. Because I asked that person out or I said yes when they asked me out. And somehow they ended up being a betrayer of the same variety that I have encountered so many other times in my life. So you have to understand that you are the common denominator. All the people who betrayed you did not have a meeting and plan it all out in advance. You are the common denominator. That might be hard for your ego to deal with. Tough shit. The thing is, the ego gets more mileage out of being the victim. But if you're the victim, then you can never manifest because you're in victim reality. It's always somebody else's fault. And, you know, you're just like this person on a raft in the middle of the ocean. It just depends on where the winds and the currents are going. And that's where you're going to end up. 
But if you're the manifester, you could say, why the hell did I steer this boat over here? There's rocks. Um, this is a bad place for boats. <laughs> you know? So, number one, take the responsibility. There's something in me that keeps doing this. Now, I don't know what it is. I'm not doing it on purpose. I don't want to to have this pattern replaying. Then number two, go to the earliest memory of a similar event. And I mean, shoot for two years old, three years old, four years old. Don't go to, oh, I was 16 and my girlfriend cheated on me. No, go to... I was best friends with this kid when I was four and then they did what, I, you know, they called me a poopy head in front of the class and everybody laughed and then they never hung out with me again. And that was the beginning of my pattern of betrayal. So go to that earliest thing and then sit in that feeling. Sit in that pain that you felt then. Because I can guarantee you one thing. If you have a pattern that keeps repeating, you have not learned the lesson. You have not processed the emotion. And you can check out other videos I have on emotional digestion that will help you do that. But the thing is, there's some healing that you need to do. And, and then the third thing that you need to do is you need to contend with losing this dream. Becoming disillusioned in a good way. Like, with my pattern of, of these best friends, the illusion was, I'm going to have this connection with this best friend. You know, I never put it this in this way in my mind. I only figured this out a few years ago. But it's like, I'm going to find that, that one person that's going to, you know, stand in for daddy. That's going to give me everything I would have gotten from him. Again, I never thought those thoughts. If you would have told me that at any point in my past, I would have been like, no, he's an asshole. I don't want anybody like that. So it takes a lot to realize what your, you know, what your illusion is. Okay. So you have the wound on the bottom and you have the dream on the top, right? The dream is somebody's going to, I'm going to find that person that, that, that makes it all okay. So the, the not okay is the wound on the bottom. Okay. And so you have to heal the wound on the bottom and you have to pop that illusion on the top. And which one is harder to do? It might be, I would argue, it's harder for the ego to let go of the illusion than, than to work on the pain. Because the illusion is what keeps you going. It's that brass ring you keep reaching for. But it's not there because you are it. You are the thing. You are the center of your existence. And every time you're reaching out for a person a thing, an object, uh, a title, an award, whatever. 
And I say, when you're reaching out for it, feel the energy. You're reaching and you're getting off balance. Anytime you do that, you are in inauthenticity trying to cover something else up that hurts. Generally. Or just the basic emptiness that you're trying to cover up. So what you need to do is let go of the illusion. There is no special person that's going to come in and make it all better. Does that mess with your head? Can you get with that? Can you get with that emotionally? A lot of these things that I say, people can say, yeah, I agree with that. Okay, let's see you do it, right? Um, so when you, you have to find out what is that thing that keeps you going? What is that thing that keeps you reaching outside of yourself? And with betrayal, it's like, well, I'm going to find somebody I can totally trust. And the universe, by kind of bringing you all this betrayal, it's not saying, no, you cannot trust them, don't trust anybody. It's not that. What the universe is saying is, you don't even trust yourself. And the, the manifestation mirror keeps bringing you evidence of that in the form of these other people. You need to be an entire unit <laughs> that doesn't require others, but really enjoys and loves others, but doesn't crave anything from them to fill an empty void. And when you get in that mode, and I'm not claiming to be 100% there, I'm way closer than ever. And it's one of those things like uh, that I heard when I was a kid that blew my mind. Somebody said, well, if you go halfway to the wall and then halfway to the wall and then halfway to the wall forever, you'll never get to the wall. I was like, what? That's impossible. <laughs> but true. Okay. You might never get to some invulnerable state. That's not what it's about. But you will be in a new alignment. And that new alignment, rather than unbalanced reaching out, will be aligned. It'll be aligned with your authentic self, your authentic nature. And that's where your power is. That's where your magic is. So you're never going to find somebody else who solves your pattern of betrayal. You're never going to find another person that breaks the cycle of betrayal. You have to do it. You have to do it by healing the wound from early childhood and giving up on the fantasy that is inauthentic and takes you away from your power. And if you want my help doing that, reach out, andysway at yahoo.com. We can do it by phone or in person here in Southern California. And I can walk you through the steps and support you in, in changing this pattern. But you got to do it. So thanks so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. 
I'd be very grateful for that. Have a great day. Bye.